everyone in class should be sitting up. You should have your either your meet open if you wanted to see the words a little bit closer, or you should be looking at my screen. So starting tomorrow, we are starting the I Learn for Reading. And there are three reading I Learn tests. You have one that um, you can take up to two days on as long as you need it. And the other two are called performance tasks where you actually have to like do something besides answer questions. We're just gonna review a little bit today. Um, these are three different types of questions you might come across. So we are just going to do a little bit of review today. We're doing it together. You're not gonna have homework. So I just wanted to go through them together. That way, you know, maybe what are some type of questions you might come across. Feel free to follow along with me. I am gonna read this stuff aloud when obviously tomorrow you'll be reading it yourself, right? Like no one's gonna read a lot of the test to you. So just follow along. So obviously when you get to a question, someone tell me what is the most important thing that you need to do first? Yeah. You click to a question. Pretend this is the I learn. Obviously, it won't be exactly set up like this. This is the I learn. What is the first thing you do? Don't worry about name because on the I learn, you won't actually have to put your name. Last year, I had kids actually do this instead of us doing it together. What is the first thing you do every time you get to a question? Corgan. Yes, you read the question slash the directions. Read all of them. Don't pretend like you know what you need to do and skip ahead. You actually have to read it all. So obviously here is, right, here's the question. So for this one, it's this is the question and then these are the directions. So a student is writing a report about dogs for social studies. Read the paragraphs from the draft of the report and complete the task that follows. What is the task? The task is to highlight the two sentences in the paragraph that do not support the main idea. How many sentences total are we going to highlight? Show me. Two. two. And what, explain to me which two in your own words. In your own words, which two are we gonna be highlighting, Dylan? Yeah, the two that have nothing to do with what we're reading about, okay? So I'm going to read this. Remember, tomorrow you'll be reading it all yourself, but I figured while we're doing it together, I'll read it aloud. If you're on my meet, follow along. If you're looking at my screen, also follow along. So the dog is one of the most popular animals in the world. It was one of the first animals to be domesticated or trained for use by humans. The dog's scientific name is... Canis familiaris. It is related to, I don't know why there's not a cat on there. It is related to the coyote, wolves, foxes, and jackals. People around the world keep dogs as pets, guards, or work animals. The dog is an animal with sharp teeth, an excellent sense of smell, and a fine sense of hearing. Each of its four legs end with a foot or paw with five toes. Cats also walk on four legs and have paws. Each toe has a soft pad and claw. A coat of hair keeps the dog warm. It cools off by panting and hanging its tongue out of its mouth. Apart from these common features, dogs come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. Dogs that have similar sizes, looks, and behaviors make up a group called breeds. There are more than 400 different types, different breeds of dogs. A dog with parents of different breeds is called a mongrel or mutt. Some of the most popular breeds are Beagles, Boxers, Bulldogs, Collies, Dachshunds, Dalmatians, Sherman Shepherds, Golden Retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, Pitbulls, Terriers, Poodles, Pugs, Rottweilers, Scottish Terriers, Shih Tzu, Siberian Huskies, and Yorkshire Terriers. Female dogs give birth to a litter of her puppies about two months after mating. A litter contains two to 12 puppies. Cats can litters roughly the same size as dogs. Newborn puppies are blind and deaf. They depend on their mother for milk and protection. Puppies become more independent when they are three to four months old. Dogs live 10 to 15 years. Dogs have been with humans since prehistoric times. The ancient Egyptians thought dogs were holy. The ancient Romans kept watchdogs. In a palace of ancient China, people kept small dogs in the sleeves of their robes. Over the years, people developed different breeds of dogs for different purposes. Toy dogs, including Poodle and the Pug, were met as pets. 
Other dogs are meant to do certain jobs. The Cocker Spaniel and other sporting dogs also bring comfort and joy. So that's a lot to read, right? Yeah, of course. It's the reading test. You're going to be doing lots and lots of reading. But within these are two sentences that we don't need. So in this first paragraph, does anyone think anything needs to be highlighted? In paragraph number one, or can I move on to paragraph number two? Opinions, thoughts? Move on or highlight? Move on. Paragraph number one is good to go. Nothing needs to be highlighted there. Paragraph number two, I'm seeing hands up. Ethan, your hand was up. Is there a sentence in here that does not go along with what we were talking about? Give me a thumbs up if you agree with Ethan. Were we talking about cats? No, we're talking about dogs. Right, we are talking about dogs. So there is no reason to have this in our paragraph. So this should be one thing that you're highlighting. And tomorrow during the iLearn test, you will not physically be highlighting it like I just did. All you have to do is click on it and it highlights it itself. Do you remember that from the practice test? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's move on to paragraph three. This is when we were talking about different dog breeds. Yes, no, move on. All right, I'm hearing some people say move on. So how about the next one? Olivia, your hand went up. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with what she said. Were we talking about cats? No. No, we are only talking about dogs. Literally, from the directions, it said a student is writing a report about dogs. So the two sentences we highlighted were about cats. I agree with both of those. Those are the two sentences that do not go along because they are about cats. So that is good to go. If you did the highlighted both of those tomorrow, you would get that correct. Now, let's think real quick. Tomorrow during the iLearn, if it lets you click three sentences when it says two, should you click three? No. no. It is very important tomorrow and on all your tests that you look for the bolded words. If it says two sentences, only highlight two sentences. If it says five, do five. If it says one, do one. Just because it lets you click more than it says does not mean to do that. Okay? Make sure you're paying attention to those bolded words. They will be bolded when they want a certain number. Ethan, take off your hood. Now, number two is set up a little bit different. The story is first. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, oh wait, no, I lied. So the exact same story that we just read is here again, but with different directions. So I'm gonna read the directions and then we can go back to the story. So directions for question two said, above you just read about dogs. Nod your head if we just read about dogs. In your own word, please explain what you learned about dogs. You must list at least Three things you learned about dogs using details from the paragraphs above. Type your answer below. Make sure you use radar to answer the question. Answer all parts of the question above. Use correct punctuation and capitalization. If you're using radar, you should have at least a paragraph long. I'm going to tell you tomorrow or on any of your tests, it's not going to say use radar. Okay, that's what we use here at Westville for answering our short answer questions. It's not going to say use radar. You're just going to know anytime you need to answer a short answer question, you're going to use radar. What is the first step of radar? What is the first step of radar, Abigail? Restate the question. So this isn't necessarily a question. It's more like I'm telling you what to do. Connor, you're not on what you should be on. If I see that again, I will be asking you to close your computer. It says, you just read about dogs. In your own word, please explain what you learn about dogs. You must learn, list at least three things you learned about dogs using details. So how am I going to restate this? 
How am I going to tell someone what my paragraph is going to be about? I need it in my own words. Dylan, how might you start this out? All right, I just read about dogs. Below, I'm going to tell you about what I learned. Anyone else um, want to tell me what they might say? Landon? I'm going to let you know that that will not be an option. I don't care if you knew every single fact on there. Not answering it does not work. If you were to put, I knew all of this, you know what you'd get on that I learned question? Zero points. I don't care if you already knew stuff, lie. Pretend like you didn't know that pit bulls were a popular dog breed. Pretend like you didn't know that dogs could live up to 15 years, okay? The goal is to take details and repeat them, okay? So if you didn't learn something too bad, pretend like you did. So I just read about the dogs. Below, I'm going to tell you about what I learned. Does that tell you what our paragraph's gonna be about? Yeah, what's our paragraph gonna be about? dogs so would one person like to tell me something that they learned from this paragraph or if you need me to scroll to a certain paragraph so you can remember miss um olivia your hand is up something i learned from what where did we learn it right from how about the article is that dogs can have up to 12 puppies in a litter, period. How many things have I told you so far? I disagree. I've told you one thing. Where's two? I've told you one thing. How many do I need to tell you? Three. Who would like to tell me something else they learned? Maybe we could do a quote from the paragraph, maybe. Jaden? Right, so we could even go back to the story and copy that. It cools off by panting and hanging its tongue out of its mouth. So let's copy paste that. And we could say, I also learned that a dog, quote, cools off by panting and hanging its tongue out of its mouth. Okay, so what would you do then? You would just type it out. You can write the exact same thing if you put it in quotes. That's the whole point of putting in quotes. That's a direct quote from the story. You can do that. Even if, hi. I do not, I'm good to go. It's totally fine if it won't let you actually copy and paste it. But guess what? You have those notes. You can open up the notes during the story, type it in, go to the question, open up the notes again and see what you typed, right? That's why you have those notes. Or you could even highlight the sentence so you remember which sentence it is for later. You have to use all those tools tomorrow, okay? Those tools are important. So we now have how many things about dogs that we learned? Show me with your hands. How many things about dogs have we written about? Two. How many do we have to write about? Three, because remember, it's bolded. Would someone like to tell me something else we learned about dogs? Mia. Since this is the final thing we're going to say, what's a word we could use to start this off? I don't want to use the word finally. There's another word that I think is a better choice. Anyone know? Starts with an L. Lastly. Lastly. I learned that dogs can live up to 15 years according to, this would be a good point to add a detail and say which paragraph it's in, which these are numbers, so one, two, three, four, according to paragraph four. Am I done? 
Did I answer the question? I need a conclusion. We answered the question, but we have to end it. Remember, Mrs. Kneipel loves closure. So how could I maybe end this? Let me read to you what I already have. I just read about dogs. Below, I'm going to tell you what I learned. Something I learned from the article is that dogs can have up to 12 puppies in a litter. I spelled litter wrong. I also learned that dogs, quote, cool off by panting and hanging its tongue out of its mouth, end quote. Lastly, I learned that dogs can live up in 15 years, according to paragraph four. But now I need to end it. I need some closure in my life. Haley, how might you end this? This is what I learned about dogs. So I'm telling you again what we learned about from the article. Anyone else? How would you maybe end it? Totally. Remember, our endings are normally always different, and that's totally fine because you're just ending it. Landon, what might you say? Or those are three new things I learned about dogs. Are either of those fine? So I think both of those are really good options, and both of them are showing us closure. Did I use capital letters? Yes or no? Did I use capital letters? Yeah. Yes. Did I use punctuation? Yeah. Do I have a paragraph? Yeah. Yes. You have to have all those things anytime tomorrow. Unless it's literally saying like a one word answer, you have to use radar. Remember, the I learned tests are untimed, meaning you have as much time as you want, meaning we want you to do your personal best. So you could have questions where you have to highlight sentences. You could have questions where you have to actually type out an answer. And this last one is a little bit different, but it is very likely you might have a story or you might have a question like this. So I'm just going to show you this next one because it is a little bit different, okay? So this one, again, it has the words before and then the directions, okay? So follow along as I read the words. A student is writing a narrative for English class about a girl and her adventure on the first day of summer vacation. Read the paragraphs from the draft of the narrative and complete the task that follows. So those are the directions. Well, that's actually like the intro. Here's the paragraphs and then here's the directions. So, it was Holly's favorite day of the year, the first day of summer vacation. Holly was very excited. Her mother had promised that after breakfast, they would go to the park and play at the splash pad. Holly had been looking forward to this day for a long time. Holly was up bright and early eating her breakfast in a hurley. Mom, it's time to wake up, Holly yelled up the stairs. Her mother rolled over in bed, dreading the long day ahead. She knew though, how grateful Holly would be to spend the day with her. That thought made her smile and slowly roll out of bed and head to the breakfast table. So those were the three paragraphs, boys and girls. Now it's time for directions. This is something you might have tomorrow. And this is a little bit different. Corden, you're not where you're supposed to be. The directions say, continue the narrative. What does that mean before I even continue on? Olivia. Right. Continue the narrative means you're going to finish the story. So it says continue the narrative and include meaningful dialogue and description about what happened on Holly's first day of summer vacation. Did they ever make it to the splash pad? Did something crazy happen? Make it interesting. Be sure to use correct capitalization and punctuation. You must type at least two full paragraphs. Don't forget to add detail or dialogue. So this is something you might have to do. And this would be a chance for you all to get very creative. What do you have? We're not gonna write it all together. I'm just, we're just gonna talk about it and then we're gonna go review something else. Boys and girls, boys and girls, Mrs. Siddig's class. Voices should be off. You can write anything you want 
as long as you add a few things. What is something you have to have? Let's talk about this. What do you have to have according to the directions? What is one thing, Mia? No, that is not something you have to have add in there. I disagree. We already know she ate breakfast. That was in the first part. What is something we have to have an hour diet or an hour story? Dylan. We have to add dialogue. Does it say how much dialogue? No. So if you added one line of dialogue, would that count? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It does not say you have to add lots of dialogue. It just says you need to have dialogue. So you need to have at least one line of dialogue if you were actually doing this. What else do you have to have in this, in your part, Corgan? At least two full phrases. Two full paragraphs that is something you have to have could you have more yes you could always do more but could you do less no that means you need a minimum that's not how you spell minimum minimum of 10 sentences that is the least amount of sentences you could have what is something else you need to have in this abigail Right, correct punctu capitalization and punctuation. Meaning, at the end of every sentence, we have punctuation. At the beginning of every sentence, we have capital letters. And what is something else we need to do? Mia? Right, we need to actually finish the story itself. We're talking about people on the first day of summer vacation. Should we end up talking about Christmas? Yeah. No, we're talking about the first day of summer vacation. Although you can be as creative as possible, you still need to follow along with the story. And it is about a girl on the first day of summer vacation and the splash pad. So if we were to actually write this, it would be important to add dialogue, have at least two full paragraphs, which is a minimum of 10 sentences, have correct punctuation and capitalization, and of course, finish the story meaning staying with the prompt. Those are the four main things you would need to have if you were assigned something like this. Are there any questions? Olivia. Um, can I but is that something that could really happen? Yeah. But we are talking about a real girl on her real first day of summer vacation. All right. So is it possible, let's, if you can hear my voice, put your hands on top of your head. Obviously there were not splash pads around when there were dinosaurs around. So could we add that? No, we could not. You need to make sure it fits along with the story. If the story is about dinosaurs, please add stuff about dinosaurs. But this story in particular is about a girl in today's day and age. So we should not be adding things about dinosaurs. We should not be adding things about, I don't know what else, but aliens, aliens because we have no proof of that. So we should not be adding things about aliens. If you can hear my voice, put your hands on top of your head. The goal of the I Learn test is not to be silly. The goal of the I Learn test is to do our personal best. Does anyone have any questions over the types of questions we just went over? Are you for sure 110% going to have all of those questions tomorrow? No, of course not. I don't remember. I, a, I don't know if the um, things have changed from last year and B, or from the year before, I don't know if they changed and C, I haven't, I haven't seen them. Okay. So your questions could be different, but those are some different types of things. Okay. I also wanted to just review our suffix and prefixes really quick with a little bit of the time we, oh, that's not what I wanted cancel with a little bit of the time we have left because we haven't gone over them in a while. So these are just a review. Remember, these are things we have learned in the past that might help you when you're reading things tomorrow. Right in, please focus. So remember, roots, 
Someone raise their hand right now and tell me where a root goes in a word. Where does a root go, Jaden? Anywhere. Anywhere. A root can be at the beginning. A root can be in the middle. A root can be at the end. A root can be anywhere. So one of the words we, or one of the roots we learned was phone for sound, like a phonograph. We learned photo means light, like a photograph. Odd means here, like audio. Viz means see, like vision. Auto means self, like auto control. It's doing it on its own. Bio means life. Biology is the study of life. Geo means earth, like geography. Gram means written, drawn, or recorded. Graph means written, drawn, or recorded. Fur means carry or bring. And rough means break or bust. Does anyone have any questions about those? Remember, these are things we've learned in the past. I just wanted to read them again one time to you. And remember, the main part is you remember a root can go anywhere in a word. Landon. Do you have a question? Okay. All right. Someone raise their hand and tell me, where does a prefix go? Where does a prefix go, Bryden? At the beginning. And remember, a lot of prefixes from we learned in the beginning mean a lot of different things. I-R means not, like irregular, not regular. I-L also means not, like illegal, not legal. Un means not, like unnecessary, not necessary. Non also means not, like non-urgent, not urgent. And dis can also mean not, like I disagree, it means we do not agree. Re means again, like redo, to do it again. Pre means before, how about like prefix? Does that make sense, everyone? Prefix. For means before, post means after, and mid means in the middle. Any question about prefixes? Remember, if you take a prefix away, there should still be a word there. And lastly, suffix. Suffixes are, in my opinion, um, like they mean the most challenging thing because sometimes suffixes don't just have a meaning, they actually change things. So remember, when we add a Y to something, it changes from a noun to an adjective, such as cloud. That's a thing, a noun, but if I add a Y, it becomes cloudy, which is an adjective, a descriptive word. I-L-Y or L-Y turns an adjective into an adverb. Full means full of, obviously. Less means without, like use or um, we are, I can't think of one with less right now, of course, but less means without. Meant, add, yeah, useless, you're without it. Meant, by adding meant to the end of the word, it usually, when I say usually, do roots, suffixes, and prefixes follow the thing every single time? Hello? No, remember a root, a suffix, a prefix, there are always, there's a rule, but there's always things that don't follow the exact rule. Ness changes an adjective to a noun. Ology is a study of, like biology. Ologist, a person who studies or is an expert in related allergy. Al means having to do with, related to, or having the characteristics of. And I see also means having to do with, related to, or having the characteristics of. Okay, I think that is the main things I wanted to review today. But quickly, let's just go over some test taking tips. If you have a tip that you would like to share, please raise your hand. What is a test taking tip? Not just for the reading test, but for any test. What is a test taking tip that you're going to want to remember for tomorrow? Abigail. Yes, that was Mrs. Kreifel's biggest one. Eliminate answers that you know do not fit. We, everyone should have gone over the strike-through button when doing the practice test. Use that strike-through button. It's going to be helpful. That is called the process of elimination. If you know C doesn't make sense, use the strike-through button so you can get rid of it. It is better to choose between two or three than it is to choose between four. 
So that is Mrs. Kneifel's first thing that I want you guys to remember tomorrow. Use process of elimination. What's another test taking tip that I want you to remember for tomorrow, Olivia? Read the questions carefully. Is it okay to read the questions more than once? Yes. Really, Corgan, it's not. It is. it is, of course, okay. Is it okay to flag a question and skip it and come back later? Yes. yes, that is why they have that. It is important. We don't want you to sit on a question for 30 minutes and become frustrated. If you're really struggling with something, flag it and just come back to it later. It's not going to be helpful if you sit there and get frustrated with something you're struggling with. Skip it, come back to it later. That's what the flag button is for. What's something else that is a helpful test taking tip, Dylan? Are you going to read all that answer Yes, read all the answer choices because remember the island likes to be sneaky and it normally says things like the best answer choice, meaning some of, there could be more than one that makes sense, but we want the one that fits the best. So that means reading all of the answer choices. Even if you know A will work, C could be better. So be sure to read all the answer choices. That was a good one, Dylan. Thank you. Landon. Right. Use the tools that are there for you if you need them. If you need to use the notes, use them. If you want to use the highlighting button, use them. If you want to flag a question, use it. And I'm telling you, use the strike through to get rid of answer choices. I'm not even giving you an option. All of you better be using the strike through. Okay, that is super important. Olivia. Yes, if there's something to read, read it. Remember, this is not time. You have lots of time to do it. No one should be rushing. Is there a prize to get done first? No. no, there's no prize. So just do your personal best. Also, tonight, make sure you go to sleep. And remember, breakfast is still free. So tomorrow morning, I suggest you all get breakfast because it's important to have a nice full stomach before you take tests. And breakfast is free, so you might as well go get it. And lastly... Tomorrow, your Chromebook should be charged. Bless you. Okay, make sure your Chromebook is charged. I think those are all the main things I wanted to talk about. Corgan? No, don't go to bed right when you get home. Haley? Go to bed when you get home. Haley? I cannot hear Haley, Connor. Have your sweatshirt already with you. Don't have things to distract you. Don't have toys on your desk, things like that. Olivia. Um, take everything that you need, put it in here, Haley, under your desk so you don't make any noise. Yeah, it's important that we're respectful to others because I'm going to tell you right now, some of you may be able to get this done in a fairly good amount of time and some of you might take longer. Is that okay? Yeah. I don't care how long it takes you. I just want you to do your personal best. That is all that matters to me, okay? Um. Lastly... Virtual students, obviously, you won't be taking it tomorrow, I don't think. I don't know when virtual students are coming in. But um, they I have to take it eventually. Boys and girls, Mrs. Kneifel's still talking. So I'm letting you know right now, we are not going to be having reading class the next few days because we're doing the reading test. So um, I will not, Ethan, put that away. I will not be seeing you guys um, tomorrow for sure. I need to talk to the other two teachers about Wednesday. I'm gonna, I'm hopefully gonna be able to get our writing prompt directions done and stuff. So we can, I might either wanna give that to you guys Wednesday or Thursday, but I'm telling you, there won't be any reading. There's no module this week, no grammar, no spelling this week, no reading homework, okay? So you're not gonna see me tomorrow, virtual students. And obviously in-class students, you're not gonna see me either. So no one panic, okay? No reading tomorrow. And then potentially sometime this week, I'm gonna give you guys your module four, or not module four, but your quarter four writing prompt, which, just a little insight, your quarter four writing prompt is going to have to do with your state fair project. So it's just like adding on one more thing to your state fair project. And so it shouldn't really be that hard, actually. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So thank you guys for following along with me. Do not panic about the iLearn. All you have to do is your personal best, and that's all I care about. 
I will see you all later. Bye-bye. I could not even give you a guess.